everyone. Good morning. Sorry we're a little bit behind schedule today. Uh, I uh, wanted to thank you very much for your patience and waiting for us. We just wanted to get everything set up so we were ready to go when, when we started. Um, so we are very pleased today to welcome Cis, the Indigenous Plant Diva, to come and chat to us today a little bit about uh, local Indigenous herbal medicines, how to make some teas. So we're just going to have some fun uh, today on, on Valentine's Day. So before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional, ancestral, unceded and occupied territories of the Hunkamunan speaking Musqueam people. I would also like to acknowledge the First Nations Health Authority for generously funding the UBC Learning Circle in this particular session. Um, quick reminder today, before we start, sometimes the stuff we talk about, the topics we cover can be sensitive or emotionally triggering. Um, if that's you for today, please engage in some self-care. Uh, go talk to an elder, family, friend, counselor, anything that you need, um, make sure that you're doing that. Uh, so, team introductions quickly. My name is Cole, I'm from the Chowethil First Nation and I'll be facilitating the session today. Other Learning Circle team members in the room but off camera are Cynthia, our production coordinator. Um, so with that out of the way, I just wanted to chat a little bit about our guest, uh, Cease. Um, uh, she's an inter interdisciplinary artist who works with new media and interdisciplinary arts as well as community engaged um, and, uh, and she's a public artist. Her arts practice of 25 plus years has been focused on sustainability, indigenous cultural elements, and have included themes of ethnobotany and digital media technology. So she's an emerging textiles artist, um, learning uh, Squamish and, and Stalu um, weaving techniques in wool and cedar. Recent works and shows include the 2019 Indigenous Storyteller in Residence with the VPL, congratulations, a group show in Brisbane at the IMA entitled The Commute, co-curated by five curators and eight artists being featured together. So that seems really cool. Um, this year, CIS will be launching two public art projects. One will be a public art project entitled Constellation of Remediation in collaboration with Danae artist uh, Anne Riley. The project will focus on plants and fungi as remediators. Very cool. Um, the second public art project will take place through Gallery 221A, located at the semi-public site on Georgia Street in the Strathcona neighborhood. This project is going to transform an empty lot into a small forest through plant remediation and permacultural elements. Um, so if we have a chance, I'd love to have you chat a little bit about that because that seems really great. Uh, Cease is currently working with a group of Indigenous matriarchs in a program entitled um, Indigenous Matriarchs 4. This project will create training supports for up to 200 Indigenous people throughout BC in AR, VR, XR, MR for a diverse array of different work, uh, sorry, different work and art practices. Um, so hopefully we'll get to chat with Cease a little bit about that as we go through, yeah. um, get her to spill some details on that. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic on to you. Please uh, lead the way. So, especially today, squalowins are hearts. And anhath uh, squal. It's a beautiful day. The snow has made everything really pretty, but also made everything slow. <laughs> so that's Vancouver. Sorry for you northerners that are making fun of us. And, <laughs> and you know, you know how it is. Uh, I lived up north a long time, so I can drive great. But <laughs> having said that, that means I drive really slow because people in Vancouver get panicked. Um, I've been a few times behind people going 25K in a 60 zone <laughs> i'm like okay the road is clear just go <laughs> please yeah. yeah well i thought about uh different plants that i use for healing and wellness and you know throughout my whole practice i've had people say oh do you have any love potions and and i always <laughs> think how funny because i think of every tea that i blend as a love potion Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that they all have different things they do for mm -hmm. us. So I, I did, of course, bring some heart medicine because cool. it's the big heart day. Nice. Um, but I thought about, you know, how do we love ourselves? What is it we do for love? And, and how is that uh, in regards to living in this colonial structure that is what it is today? So how do we take uh, what we have and change gears and look at the world in a way that, you know, whether it's a plant that helps our heart or our kidneys or other organs, or if it calms our mind, uh, whatever it is, it's we're using those medicines for healing and wellness and essentially love, self-love, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I 
you know, have a few lovely things on the table that people might be checking out. I think we have a little close up on some of it, right? And so I started with the grandfathers and I have the, I have uh, five rocks that I put out and one is obsidian. And I brought this obsidian, which is really beautiful. I brought it from my dear friend, Rudy Reimer, who does uh, archeology span and he, uh, we are we are talking about how we can't even talk about plants until we talk about rocks because mm. rocks are the uh, oldest beings on the planet. They're our grandfathers, and so thinking about what does that mean? You know, it's they're the oldest beings, so uh, they they do literally ground us and mellow mellow us out and help us to feel. Um, feel more focused. I brought also some amethyst, some amethyst and some rose quartz because uh, rose quartz is for the heart and amethyst is for the mind. So those two are rocks, they're stones, precious stones that are used for healing our hearts, our minds. Um, sometimes you just have to hold on to these rocks and do breath work and you know, breathe your way through it. I also yeah. put some tobacco ties down because we we like to honor the sacred medicine. So we have some sweet grass and sage and tobacco. I didn't have time to to rob a cedar tree on the way, but <laughs> <laughs> but we know that cedar is also very sacred. But I do have a nice Devil's Club uh, rhizome here, and Devil's Club is another good medicine for helping us with endurance and strength. Uh, I think it's kind of funny at one time I, I had, uh, it was years ago when I was first starting out and people would come again asking for love potions. So I said, yeah. well, Devil's Club is a good love potion. And they're like, really? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, why? And I'm like, because it's a bit of an endurance herb. So <laughs> it will yeah. help you go the distance in your lovemaking. Right. So then the next thing I had several people at my table and they all took that <laughs> seriously and everybody yeah. wanted the devil's club. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's really funny. Yeah. Um, of course, some rose petals because rose is love. And I've got some beeswax candles here, honey beeswax Beautiful. candles because None of this would be possible without bees. Uh -huh, bees are the most loving creatures on the planet. They, uh, they teach us selflessness because they go out and they, uh, they pollinate. Each, each bee in its short life pollinates up to 2 million flowers. Wow. So I think that's a lot of love. That is a lot of love. That's a whole lot of love <laughs> that the bees are giving us. And then a nice chunk of chaga yeah. because chaga has become a really popular uh, healing medicine amongst many people for many reasons. But I found out recently that it helps with blood pressure. Really? Which strengthens the heart. So, hey. Nice. There you go. It's all <laughs> so, related. yeah. So everything I, I did carefully think about plants that help and heal us and make us feel good. Um, what our traditional ideas of love are and mm -hmm. yeah of course some tinctures that I made I I uh, that's wonderful can I see it yeah yeah definitely so uh, this one is called antifi and it, it contains one herb and that is black elderberries cool yeah and virus yeah and it helps to to fight viruses and um, yeah, so I call it anti vi I was yeah. teasing my niece. I said, there's a new auntie here. And she's like, who? And I was like, anti vi And she's like, who's anti vi <laughs> like, She's a super healer. That's funny. Yeah, and then the Heal Me one has a bunch of different things in there. And it's for our respiratory ailments at this time of year. So I cool. look at herbs that are good for the respiratory, like uh, mullein. And then this beautiful... Uh, most people would say it's not very beautiful, but it is the, I'll pull it out because it's harder to see with the shiny material. But this here is a lichen that comes from, this one I picked up in the Nass Valley with a dear friend of mine. You can actually only go picking medicines in some areas if you have people from the nation. And this one here is, uh, a lot of people might recognize this. It's a little bit brownish now, but um, 
it is often very bright green and it's called loberia lichen and oh, yeah. yeah and that's one of the ingredients in there and there what it go. does is it really uh gets into your lungs and it really sucks the moisture out that can lead to pneumonia and bronchitis and just when everybody's sick, they always can feel, you can even feel yeah. that liquid in your lungs kind of rolling around, right? And so something like Loberia just gets in there and it just, it's like a moisture vacuum. Cool. And it just sucks out all the moisture and it, so it loves your lungs. Awesome. <laughs> As we say. And, you know, when we have problems with our, with our lungs, it often is actually from our heart. So mm. people that have trouble in relationships and have recurring coughs and respiratory ailments or dealing with love and it could be lovers it could be friends it could be family right so that cycle of uh, of trying to you know give yourself love you're also trying to give your family love and yeah. and i think so many people that are watching are probably you know in agreement that hey you know when we don't care for ourselves it's really hard to care for others but also if we care too much for others and not enough for ourselves, we're mm. not there for ourselves or others. So, yeah. so the real trick to love potions is seeing every blend you make for yourself as a love potion. And, um, you know, we have this idea, people will say, oh yeah, well, love potions are to make people fall in love with you. It's like, well, the best way to have people fall in love with you is to be real, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Be your most real self. If you want to decolonize your love practice you have to be real to yourself your heart your mind your spirit and all of that comes through your connection with the plant world and you know that's why i always try to have a combination of the rocks and the plants just to remind ourselves that they are our grandparents and our most unconditional love comes from our grandparents you know, uh, with our parents, there's conditions, all yeah. <laughs> there's rules, there's regulations. And with grandparents, yeah. it's about understanding and respecting and, uh, and just having that open yeah. flow of love. Right. Yeah, and, for sure. and now that I have a two and a half year old granddaughter, I understand grandparent love very much. <laughs> so, yeah. So, That's and she's cool. already starting. I got a little scoop. I got one of these little scoops for her mm. so she can <laughs> scoop herbs and, nice. and I got the next one up and <laughs> yeah um yeah so we when my daughter and I are blending herbs now her daughter's mm. always around and we've had to give her her own little bowl yeah nice. and then she sits there packaging and <laughs> three generations yeah we just keep her busy it's yeah. like we gotta train her young so that you know when she's ready she'll be at the table with us selling that's awesome. teas and <laughs> that's awesome yeah what else did i bring i brought some salve that came from our community garden if you'd like to try some mm. and this one has lavender in it that's really nice it's a little I bit another one actually there. that has uh, sweet birch wow that's such a nice scent i love it yeah Thank you. it's very Ooh. sweet eh yeah yeah and the other yeah, and we don't put much in. We just put enough to to make it um, so noticeable. Soothing. Yeah. And then these herbs all came from our garden. We put um, frog leaf, and uh, which is also known as plantain, and comfrey, and other herbs are um, mullein and yarrow and calendula and lavender of course and then olive oil and coconut oil and yeah and some lavender oil just for extra cool. aroma and that's a good way to love yourself taking care of yourself by making home remedies home remedies don't just stop at a tea mm -hmm. they go into tinctures or salves and um and meditation you know and yeah. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna maybe I'll do a little blend and I'll talk about each of these herbs. So I'll cool. start with stinging nettle. I think a lot of people know stinging nettle, mm -hmm. and stinging nettle um, it comes it lives in wet, shady areas that are semi sunny. So here we go. This is all ground up. I had a lot in my backyard. Oh yeah, <laughs> and so you can do a lot of things with stinging nettle. You can also um, you can also weave with it. 
So my daughter is just learning how to weave with stinging nettle. Oh, and you can cool. make fish nets with them. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And oh, I think this one is actually the muffin. That down there. I don't want to blend one that's already blended. Um, I got some... Uh, because I'm part Hawaiian, I also do a bit of Hawaiian medicine once in a while. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of hibiscus flowers because that just gives a nice red. Nice. And that will actually make our tea red cool. when we drink it. So I don't know if we're going to have a cup of tea, but we could. And some hawthorn berries. These ones are red hawthorn berries, and we don't use too much. We just need a small amount. I'm going to, so for this mix, I put two scoops of uh, stinging nettle, and each scoop is about half a cup, or no, a cup. Yeah, so this is about a cup. So that's two cups of stinging nettle, um, a quarter of a, or half a cup of, uh, of the, yeah, hibiscus flowers, and I think a quarter of a cup of the hawthorn berries. You've just been doing it for so long, it's just kind of I just like, do it. Yeah, I don't yeah. even think about it. It's ridiculous, but I, I'm trying to be better about giving people better direction. So I'll also put about maybe half a cup of rose sips because these are really ground up. I may end up putting another thing of the stinging nettle because it looks like maybe getting drowned out there. Right. Maybe another one of those. You can see I've used a very nice basket with hearts on it. Nice. And this came from the Okanagan, from my Salish sister. Right on. I'm also going to add, actually, some uh, leaves and flowers, so about a half a cup of that, of the leaves and flowers of Hawthorne. Right. And that, what that does, it really adds strength to the Hawthorne berries themselves. Cool. So yeah, when when we're able to collect both, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else can we throw in there? Oh, raspberry leaf. Out of salmon berry leaf. Got to wait for the next year. <laughs> so I'll put in a, about. I'm gonna put say about a cup and a half worth. That'll actually probably level out the stinging nettle. Yeah. So now I'm gonna. Hopefully this is visible. Yeah, you can see me blending it up. Mm -hmm. When I blend teas, I think about good things, happy thoughts. I've been, um, I've been teaching some tea blending classes, and, mm -hmm. and I get people up, and they're a little scared when they come up to, to blend. They're like, I don't know how to blend. I'm like, just put your hands together, and just like this, and I show them, you know, just do it with love. That's part of the love potions is yeah. the love intent, we put in. Right? and. Last thing you want to do is sit there and think about somebody you're mad about, mad at. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that when you're blending your teas. That's not being decolonial and that's not loving your own self. And just, you know, feeling the textures because some of the herbs need to be rubbed right into the others to, to get well blended. And it is really about using your hands and and feeling the magic of the herbs, right. their stories, each one has a story. And you know, wh whatever nation you're from, you can start to do the research. Start you, If you start with just five plants, <laughs> mm -hmm. you, can, uh, you can get a rhythm going to learn other plants, but it really just starts with one. You fall in love with one herb and it goes from there. And so this, is a very nice loving blend that will take care of our hearts, our blood pressure, our stomach. Of course, when you feel, uh, what do they say, twitterpated, when you're, when you're feeling like attracted to somebody, your oh, okay. stomach just goes like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, I can't eat anything. I can't yeah. do anything. I, I'm paralyzed. <laughs> Paralyzed by love. Paralyzed by love. Right? Yeah. So I was thinking about, you know, what are the symptoms of love? Oh, nausea and <laughs> extreme heart rate and, you know, thinking yeah. it's it's a funny thing to actually sit and think about what we physiologically go through when we're thinking about love and yeah. and 
loving kindness, right? So now you can see we have this beautiful texture of, of herbs here with uh, some berries Very and cool. some leaf matter and flowers. Yeah. And cool. so that will make a really nice blend that will, uh, like I said, it will, it will be good for your blood pressure, your heart rate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's great for anxiety. It's great. It's great for when you're feeling nervous. Um, it gives you strength because raspberry leaf strengthens your muscles. It does calm down your stomach, which is a good thing. But it also cool. helps to, um, get, like you know, especially with the snow, people are tromping more. They're probably finding they're using leg muscles they forgot yeah. they had, and yeah. And then they get home and they're like, oh, my, my hips and my thighs are killing me. And you have a sip of this tea. will actually go right into your muscles and soothe them and nice. calm down everything. And yeah, it would be a very romantic dinner to have this tea mm -hmm. right on. <laughs> that is taking care of everything. Um, but it's also, uh, I always see uh, different teas as multivitamin and mineral drinks mm. because, you know, with the with the stinging nettle, we are high in calcium and iron and it oxygenates the blood. So it gets into everything. It gets the blood pumping better. Same with the raspberry leaf. Uh, so raspberry leaf, blackberry leaf, salmonberry leaf can all be used the same way. They're very good for the stomach, but they're also really good for every muscle in your body. And it's why women, um, you know, the greatest love is giving birth, I guess. Um, I don't know. For everybody, it's different. But I guess for mothers, the greatest love is to, to have a child. And uh, so feeding that child, this is, a, this is actually a tea that could be uh, drank by women during their pregnancy because of the raspberry leaf and the nettles and the rose hips and mm -hmm. hawthorn. It, it would all assure everything working and flowing but it's not strictly just for pregnancy it's great just for a romantic valentine dinner <laughs> yeah right on um any day of the week any month of the year and uh yeah and just that it helps with all of those things so yeah so that's one of the teas yeah so i'll just put this in here and i'll make another blend just to okay. have fun do you, you want me to? Do you want me to scoop and then you oh, go to the other next sure. bowl? Is that or does, uh, does that work? Or, or here, you hold this. I'll hold the yeah. bag. There you we go. Hold the bag. That's something I can do. I can hold <laughs> yeah. So everybody got a good look at that. I hope. And when you've mixed it up, you know because everything blends together really well. And you know the thing is, is everything has a texture. So every and it shifts. So when it's sitting in your bag and you have loose leaf tea bags, you should always kind of turn them upside down before you open them and then turn them back the right way so that everything sifts back around in there. Okay. And yeah. And then here we go. My granddaughter uh, took off with my poles and I had to go around looking for them. She hid them <laughs> at her grandmother's and I'm like, where are they? <laughs> Yeah. So I did a bit of searching and found them and I was like, I want the wooden bowl because it looks the best. Yeah. <laughs> I have a metal bowl that I was worried about it not only shining, but all of a sudden we'd see you over there and sitting in the bowl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who's that person in the bowl? Yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll put this actually, yeah, on that side over there. Yeah, sure. I'll just um, put it down here for now. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll think of another blend we can make. I brought Actually, I brought some fever few, and the reason I brought fever few, uh, not just for fevers, but for headaches. So again, another symptom of love: headaches. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, if that sweetheart of yours has a headache, you can offer this tea before dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have a headache. Hmm. Well, I have just the tea for you, honey. <laughs> right so whether your sweetheart is avoiding love or not, but so mm. this one can be. Um, we'll make this tea, it will be good for a variety of things. I guess that's, I'm going to say that it's, I've done it again, I'm trying to use the scoop. Yeah, so I, I show people, say, how much was that? that's about a scoop, which is about half a, is about a cup. About a cup. And yeah, okay. it's about a cup. And gotcha. then I'm also going to have fun here and I'm going to add some elderberries to that. Mm. So fever few and elderberries. So yeah, maybe there's 
Again, maybe you're lovesick. Maybe it's a virus. <laughs> what is Kidding. the elderberries doing in that? And so the elderberries uh, fight viruses, but okay. they also... Oh, right. they're in the... Uh, yeah, they're the, the antibody. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, making connections. I know. See, you're already on. <laughs> you're like, I figured this out. So I've just put a little bit of um, elderberries, I'd say maybe about a quarter of a cup of elderberries with half, with about a cup of feverfew. But I'd like to add, you know, something else. So I'm going to add some rose hips just to give it color other than the dark uh, elderberries. And we'll also put about a quarter of a cup of the elder, of the of salmon, getting them all mixed up. The rose hips, rose, rose hips. hips, salmon berries, elderberries. I got all the berries having a party in my head without me. So we said a lot of names there. I'm um, just going to address a question. Um, what was the first herb? Um, Fever few, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So fever few so looks, fever a, few. yeah, and it looks a lot like a like a chamomile flower. Okay. Sometimes people think they have Roman chamomile in their garden, but they actually have fever few. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks quite a bit like it. They're they're like tiny daisies, and um, and they fight migraines, but they also fight fevers. Okay. So uh, then I added some black elderberry. Uh, in there and so elderberry is really high in antioxidants so no matter what it, even if you don't have a virus it's it's feeding your body nutrients it needs raising your iron levels uh, our heart loves to be strong so <laughs> it's got yeah. dark rich uh, berry medicine in there and then the rose hips which are again always I think I'll probably use roses in anything I think of for love today. Yeah. <laughs> today. So rose hips for love. Uh, but because, you know, I, I always think, you know, you wonder how flowers got assigned to different things. And like people say roses are the flower of love. And I, mm. you know, deconstructed that in my way. Why is it the flower for love? Um, because the rose hip heals the heart, it heals the blood pressure, it increases uh, your vitamin C count, it uh, melts bad cholesterol, and it uh, helps good cholesterol flourish. Mm. So all of those reasons yeah. actually make for a good match of love for yeah. a flower. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and even the flowers themselves, different people have different beliefs. One person, one friend of mine who's Cree shared with me that when somebody passes away, they uh, have rose flowers that if it's the season of roses, they'll put rose petals into their bath and bathe in the rose petals. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also make an oil with rose petals and then mm -hmm. add that to the water. And they do that when somebody, they lose somebody because they, of the love they feel and their heart is broken. And so thinking about the way that we take care of ourselves with love and with um, loving tools. And like I said, everything that I see in the plant world is all about love. Like, to me, there's nothing Absolutely. there that hurts me, right? And uh, of course, if you're allergic to something, that's different. But, um, but we have this fabulous thing called skin. So if any of you are wondering, am I allergic to something, you can always take a piece of it, like a berry, and squish it on your arm and see if you have a reaction. You can rub a rose petal on your skin or you can rub chamomile. My father was highly allergic to chamomile, so I didn't mm. use chamomile around him. Mm -hmm. uh, I, on the other hand, can use it, but it's like one cup just... I have one cup and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I did not bring chamomile with me today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then just thinking about, you know, how these little herbs themselves, that little mixture here. Mm -hmm. So this little mixture that we've made um, is a mixture for either preventing or for healing migraines okay. uh, for uh, your blood pressure and your heart rate mm -hmm. and uh, yeah just as a nice flavored tea cool so I'm gonna ask you how you think it smells <laughs> it blew a little bit off um, that's yeah, really nice what kind of what kind of uh, aromas did you smell in there um I'm not sure. I don't, uh, admittedly, I don't engage in a lot of like 
tea making or tea drinking. I'm mm. not a big tea person. Yeah. I'm not even particularly for aroma, so I'm not going to say that I have like an advanced sense of what I'm smelling. But I think for me, the first thing when I when I'm smelling it, um, it makes me happy is too simple of a word, but it, it makes something blossom kind of in my yeah. chest, and I'm mm -hmm. like immediately I feel uh, just content. I think content would be a good word. Good like, one. Like happily content. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I smell it and I smell earth tones and I smell smell things that are I'm familiar with but I'm not sure why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I was if somebody was coming along and making me sniff things, I'd probably have to sit there for a few minutes and think about it. And, yeah. And I know that the overpowering aroma in there is the elderberries. They have a strong kind okay. of earthy pungent smell right. and uh and I think cuz they're berries, they probably as they dry uh, they could, um, they get much sweeter, but then they dry, so they're preserved in that kind of musky, sweet yeah. aroma flavor. Do we have some questions? What do we have? How, How many cups can you, uh, slash, do you drink in a day? How oh. much do you use to steep a cup? That was from Tina. Okay, so we'll go with Tina first, and mm -hmm. then we'll go to the next one. So, so Tina, um, a it depends on the different kinds of teas you're drinking. If you're drinking a tea just because you enjoy it, any one of these that we've blended, you could just drink to enjoy it. Uh, if you were drinking, say you uh, are somebody that suffers from migraines regularly, right. you would use it as you need it. Like uh, the, the tricky thing with migraines is they don't just come right when you know they're going to come. Yeah. Unless you think, well, I'll be at this event and I'm sure I'm going to get a migraine bad. <laughs> right. But you hope that isn't going to be what happens. And also the way to prevent that is to use herbs that do prevent uh, migraines. So if, so if it's migraines you're dealing with and maybe a concern about, like I'm around children a lot. I go into all kinds of elementary and high schools. Right. So I that's why I actually started making the anti-vi tincture. So I could have that if I ended up at a class one day and people are coughing and I come home and I'm like, I don't want to be sick. Yeah. But yeah. when it comes to migraines, it's a it's a tricky journey. So women that are in menopause will know this the most. They'll be like, oh, like I'm gonna get them uh when I least expect it or when I do expect it. So they all have a different relationship with it. So the trick is to always have it on hand. If you know that you're starting to get the symptoms of a migraine, start boiling your tea and put on a cup of, of yeah. uh, fever few tea or a blend like this that would give you, uh, um, it would calm a lot in you and it would uh, go right into, you know, when you make a tea, of course, it's liquid, it goes right into your system. So something that you can manage before that migraine is hitting. And uh, you could drink that every day over the next five days that you're having uh, the migraine symptoms because they might go away, but then they might pop back the next day because they're persistent and not wanting to let go of you. Um, having survived many migraines myself. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's why I think about, you know, what are my tools that I need for when a migraine is going to hit? And I know that I can't move fast. I know I can't uh, handle too many activities. So too much stimulation. Yeah. But making a cup of tea with your sunglasses on, <laughs> <laughs> so you're not, you know, set off by the sun and, uh, and just having that as much as you need it over the next uh, week that you're going through a migraine. If you're just drinking it because you like it, uh, you just have a once in a while. The other thing is you can use this for fevers, the same blend. So it's not just for migraines, but as the name Feverfew indicates, it is uh, one that will lower fevers. Right. Okay. So uh, you could have, you could even, if you know, that you're not feeling good, you could make a blend of it and brew it and keep it in the fridge and then just heat up what you need right. uh, over the days that you need it. So are so, there any, like, are there any maximum amounts that you would advise consuming? Because all of these are, of yeah. course, very potent. Um, yeah, herbs. like, and, and for sure, like, for one cup of tea, this, this here is probably about... Uh, one tablespoon worth here. So I would put one tablespoon at the most to a cup of tea. Yeah. I would put two tablespoons to a pot of tea. And if you're dealing with 
fevers or migraines, you can run the course of that pot. Uh, you can drink that pot through the day and you can drink it for up to 10 days without uh, the symptoms coming back. Okay. And, but really, as you start to see them shifting and changing, you step back and just let your body heal. Too. Right. Yeah. So and this is more of like, let's take the edge off, let's bring it back down to a level and then let our, our, our body do its natural thing. Yeah. Okay. And with the other tea that we made, the one that's it, over yeah, there, right over here. like that one here, you could you could get away with pretty much drinking this every day. The ones with the nettles and the raspberry leaf and the hawthorn flowers and leaves and berries and rose hips and hibiscus. Uh, that one, this is one you could drink regularly all the time. Like you wouldn't, um, it's not going to affect medications you have. Right. I've really had to research things like that because elders that I see uh, and talk to that get medicines from me will be on a whole bunch of uh, medications, medications, right? And yeah. heart medications are big. So even taking rose hips and hawthorn berries, although they're really good for the heart, they're not going to interfere with the medication, okay. which was a really great thing to know. Um but you should always, always, always ask your own physician so mm -hmm. that in case they have their own concerns. I have always made a point of telling doctors what kind of herbs I do. And so they're always kind of mind blown because then they, they, they're like, how do you know all this? And I'm like, I, this is what I do. I study it. So they will ask me specific questions. Oh, does it have this and that in it? Um, like for instance, my cousin has a kidney issue. She had a kidney replaced, so she can't do burdock root. So it was good for her to tell me because I have had a bunch of teas that had burdock. So I could talk to her about the ones without burdock that won't contraindicate her renal, uh, viral, uh, medications that yeah. she's taking. Yeah, right. And so, but the ones that I've shown today are pretty neutral and yes, they're potent, but they're also, um, they're not going to counterindicate uh, the medications that people may be taking. Okay. Back. okay, so I hope that one helps. Yeah, I think, we, uh, I think we got to that Oh question. yeah, and I'll get back to the sites one, but is there a special way to dry plants? Um, you know, every one of them is different, like the, uh, like this, the Loberia, I I picked a grocery bag full of this yeah. and then I laid it out on a tarp and it all fluffed out and it ended up triple the size, which Perfect. is different cool. because most herbs shrink, but yeah. this fluffed up and it fluffed up into all kinds of shapes. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, so then all of a sudden I went I, and I just took that and I basically put it in my backyard and I sprayed it with a hose on a tarp. And then I shook it all off and then I let it just air dry in the sun. Mm -hmm. And then it was dried in an hour. Okay. So that worked for that. But that's also like, a, it's a lichen that can get all kinds of earth and soil in it. That's why I made a point of giving it a good wash. Yeah. So that when I'm using it, um, it won't end up, you know, having chunks of soil <laughs> in the tea and you're drinking mud tea. Mm. Yeah. I can't even imagine how... Nasty that would be. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then stuff like uh, raspberry leaf, you can uh, pick it, like you can snip it with your pruners and then wrap it and tie it upside down so you so that the leaf mass comes out a bit like a broom. And then yeah. you tie those up and you just have them in rows. And so leafy things you can tie and wrap upside down. With the hawthorn berries, they're so easy, actually. You pick them, and then you go home and give them a good rinse mm -hmm. and shake it off. And then I use a dehydrator, but you can use a cookie tray with uh, parchment paper yeah. and just lay them out on there and just kind of roll them around. And they can dry in a day in a regular uh, warm if you have 20 degrees and it's dry in your home. If you have yeah. a house that's kind of always damp, then you want to put them into the oven okay. at about 150 and let them just, and just keep kind of shaking them and they'll dry within an hour or two. Okay. And, um, and rose hips, whole other story, <laughs> <laughs> process oriented task <laughs> that you could spend days like, 
to get a bag the size of rose hips it, it's like about a week of work trying to wow. like you have to cut the the rose hips open and scoop out the inside which is a fuzzy mass around the seeds okay the seeds are fine but the fuzzy mass is what actually uh affects you when when you drink it and yeah. then when you go to the bathroom later it creates what you call itchy bum mm. so the fuzz will come out and it will just attach itself and especially to your poor bum and <laughs> yeah that's no no good and it's no good yeah. <laughs> so it's the hardest out of all of them to process but it's also one that you could pick a whole bunch of rose hips freeze them on a cookie tray and then just bag them and then just take a small bag out at a time and if you're like me and you like to just sit and watch TV but keep yourself busy, then yeah. I keep my bowls in front of me on the coffee table and I score the the rose hip and I scoop out the inside and I put that in the middle and the little crown and the twigs I'll put in another bowl. Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, yeah, and then I go through all that. Then I wash the rose hips and then shake them dry and then freeze them again and then dehydrate them. So it's a lot of work. Okay. But it's really worth it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, yeah. So thanks very much for that, for that question. Sites of where you can buy ingredients. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can. I mean, a lot of these herbs, a lot of things you can go online. I've, I've actually, for years, used a company called Golden Bow Herbs. Mm -hmm. And that's out in Anasas Island. So it's in the lower mainland. But you can't just go there and shop. You have to go and buy, like, 75 to 100 bucks worth of bulk herbs when you go there right so i usually only use them near the like this time of year if i've had a lot of orders and i've run out of ingredients that i've right. gone and gathered or grown because you gather and do your stuff yeah yourself, right? so if by the end of the season i have to go <laughs> if i've had a busy winter a then i have to go restock and so i'll go and place an order from them or i go to local stores like i went to a local store just to pick up the elderberries and rose hips and hawthorn because couldn't get out to pick the rose sips and hawthorn before this event um plus having them ready for it so yeah. uh yeah so those are some of the places you can you can try just like i know in the states there's a lot there are a lot more options but i think sometimes there are small uh herb farms in people's communities where you can mm -hmm. go and order from or buy them online from them and uh, just encouraging people that are in your community that are local gatherers that love to gather things and yeah. either buy sell or trade with them and you know just support each other with gathering these medicines yeah okay great um, oh insomnia there we go. always a good one um insomnia i suffer a lot from insomnia so i know this one really well and it's where i will you know like people ask me how much caffeine do you drink a day i'm like well i drink one cup of earl grey tea a day <laughs> if i drink anything more than that i'm awake right right yeah and so uh, the teas that i use are things like mint and uh, chamomile to calm down. Another one is Labrador tea is a very good relaxing uh, tea that you take about seven leaves of Labrador tea and boil it in uh, two quarts. So that's a quart is four cups. So that's eight cups to seven leaves, uh -huh. seven or eight leaves. And you bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about half an hour covered. Uh -huh. And then you can put most of that in the fridge when it cools down and just heat it up as you need it for a couple of days. But drinking that in the evening when you're starting to unwind, uh, drink it early enough that you're not going to be running to the bathroom all night. <laughs> so, yeah. But just something to calm yourself. And also thinking of, uh, once again about stones. So maybe adding amethyst uh, to your altar or close to your bed. And then another one that's been working for me is breath work. So it's not even using anything, but just uh, trying to clear my mind, mm -hmm. which is always, you know, what smudge and other things are. But if people don't use those and can't, because I can't use it where I live, my, my roommates have asthma. And mm -hmm. even though they're two floors away from me, they insist that 
it gets to them. So I don't smudge in my house, but um, I do keep fresh smelling herbs around. Like we, when we started, we put all these nice little rose petals out and the fragrance just kind of wafted in here. Yeah. And so, you know, I've often been told by people that come to visit me or meet up with me, they're like, you always smell like herbs. And I'm like, I do. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. I didn't know. Um, so lavender oil is a really good one. Not everybody can use it. Uh, but that's a really good herb to even just have in potpourris or to keep a little bottle of lavender oil that you can put on your on your pillow, a few drops, so that as you're relaxing, it, it helps to really let your body calm down. Mm. And yeah, and it's mostly meditative things that are working for me recently with trying to sleep at night and uh and and i've now actually started setting an alarm for myself to go to bed at night really yeah so i think it's important that that we try to uh schedule that time to sleep and try to give ourselves at least uh six to seven hours if you get more awesome other people need more i need seven hours sleep so like last night i was you know getting all my stuff organized by the door and then my little alarm went off and said go to bed and I'm like okay (laughs) I did not argue I'm like no I'm not gonna watch one more show I'm gonna go to bed yeah it's like getting a routine for ourselves as adults is you know we put routine into children's lives all the time but we don't give ourselves that structure yeah we're like I can I'll think of that later but no in the last because of I of having years of insomnia I decided a year ago I would start setting an alarm for myself to go to bed and when I follow it I I fall asleep and even if I'm fighting it I will do the breath work and it puts me to sleep um clearing my mind using lavender Mm -hmm. all of those things yeah Engaging in some good sleep hygiene habits, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have to you have to take care of yourself in so many ways. Uh-huh. Okay, so which local store? So so I don't know where this person is coming from uh, when they say local store. Uh, for me, I'm in Vancouver. So the local stores that I go to are uh, Sweet Cherubim on Commercial Drive. Oh, Point Grey. Then you can go to uh, Gaia Pharmacy. And that is on um, Broadway near McDonald, okay. Stevens area. And Gaia Pharmacy is great. They have a lot of bulk herbs. They have tinctures and salves. They have classes there that you can go and learn about herbalism. Cool. And yeah, so those are some good ones. I'm trying to make sure I get these on. Okay, yeah, educational yeah. materials for herb harvesting. Oh. I am in the process of creating a toolkit with my friend Anne Riley, who I'm doing this uh, public art project with. One of our goals and one of our biggest heart and soul projects in this remediation project that is Mm -hmm. actually taking place on the earth and pieces of land around the city. But our greatest uh, thing is that we want to create a toolkit to teach urban indigenous youth and rural indigenous youth. It's going to be for all indigenous youth. Yeah. But having said that, we, we all have our inner child. So it's not like you couldn't pick one up, even though (laughs) they're targeted at the youth, but it is, uh, we really want to help teach young indigenous people how to do all these things, pick herbs at the right seasons, dry them, prepare them, and basically, it's like a it's like a DIY uh, kit to start learning. Not it's not going to give you the whole course of ethnobotany and the whole course of herbalism, but it mm-hmm. gets you keen on the simple steps of it. Looking at the tools you need, right. what you need to to prepare for, and yeah. And for the chaga, somebody was asking about the chaga. So here's the chaga, and you basically grind it into a powder. So you could even put it on. Uh, you know, the cheese grinders that have those crazy, that crazy side that nobody yeah. uses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where you would grind this. And okay. I use that side for like devil's club. You can grind devil's club there, chaga, and you grind that into a powder and then you make that into a nice, 
you put a, you know, I guess would be like half a tablespoon or a one teaspoon to a cup of hot water and you drink that, or you could, you could actually cook it up. Mm-hmm. Some people cook it up for half an hour. So they'll even take a couple of chunks of the chaga and do that. You can go an extra mile and make your own chai. So mm-hmm. add some turmeric in there and cool. other things that you like just to flavor it up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that helps with blood pressure and heart rate. It, it's very anti-cancerous. It's the reason that most people use it. And yeah, it's powerful medicine. Cool. So I'm just seeing if there's any other questions up there. We're good? Yeah. Are we yeah, all I caught up? Yeah, I think we're good on the questions so far. Um, are um, you... You're making me want to collect large jars and get <laughs> Yeah, and that is... Uh, so it. to Lisa Wilson, yeah. You should collect... Everybody should be collecting large jars. I almost brought a couple <laughs> in just to show people. Collect your diet, your uh, your glass jars, and it could be anything from... Well, now everything's in plastic, even for juice. But I used to even collect the little apple juice and... Um, you know, lemon, lemonade, uh, sun ripe jars, but any kind of glass jar is going to become your best friend, cool. not just Mason jars. Cool. Um, cool. and diabetes management teas. So yeah, inulin is actually found in a number of, of herbs. And one of them is burdock. One of them is a uh, huckleberry leaf. So that's exciting. And, um, I'm trying to think of other ones. But I, I, the ones that I give to my mother who has diabetes, uh, I actually give her the, all of these tinctures here. So I, I let her use for fighting colds and stuff, even though it's yeah. in a syrup. Um, yeah. She uses the Antivi. the Antivi, the Antivi. Heal Me. And I give her the Antivi um, just when she has a virus, but I give her the Heal Me regularly because of the raspberry leaf. Right. And I'm thinking of just doing a raspberry leaf tincture for her because her hands get shaky, she gets weak, and with diabetes you have to you have to be on top of eating when you're hungry, not pretending you're not hungry and then right. crashing later, right? Yeah. So with diabetes it's a tricky journey and you have to I'm I'm even learning with my mother right now who has had all kinds of ailments She's managed to stay off dialysis. She may be going on dialysis after 15 years of, of using herbs. But uh, I think in the last few years with, with cancer, she steered away from some of the diabetes herbs we are using. Mm. But one of them is goldenrod. Okay. And I don't have any because I didn't get out to pick enough last year and uh, I used up whatever I had <laughs> yep. and I use that because it's for the kidney and our, and often people with diabetes have kidney issues. Kidney is a big, kidney disease is a big thing. And so mm. it can also affect, it can really change the readings of people's diabetes. Um, even when they're doing blood tests, they, they'll be like, why? is my diabetes spike today and thinking about what they ate. So a lot of it sometimes has nothing to do with the medicines you're doing, but it, it has to do with, you know, you have your kidney spiking, but your diabetes is telling you to eat this, but you can't because it'll affect your kidney. And (laughs) so it's finding exactly the right foods to eat and um, always drinking a lot of water And the herbs that are the most profound for me for diabetes are goldenrod, uh, burdock, um, and um, what's another? Well, I actually really promote stinging nettle because it has so many nutrients in it that it heals so many of the things and gives you energy, which you end up lacking sometimes when you crash the opposite direction with... um, with your sugar drops and so what else i think um yeah and the the huckleberry leaves so huckleberry leaves which you know haven't popped out yet but <laughs> they'll, they'll be out soon yeah. uh be a lot longer up north but uh burdock root is an easy one to find so if any of you are near health food stores go in and start perusing them and asking questions um I can also make sure we put up my email at the end so that people can email me. Absolutely. Um, I'm really fine with people emailing me questions as long as you tell me 
who you are and how you found out about me <laughs> so that I can try to bring it back to this conversation. Mm. Um, yeah, and this woman, Pearl, wants to know about Labrador tea leaves. Uh, okay, well, that's always a, a it's a challenge because sometimes you can find them. People will be selling them. Uh, we do sell them on our website. Uh, but you can also, if you're living in an area where there are bogs or kind of marshy lands mm. and people know where the Labrador tea is, you could talk to local, local pickers. It is one that you'd rather try to get from a local a local source. Um, I try to pick them locally around here, but I also go, when I go visit people, I will ask permission to go pick uh, Labrador tea and I'll often go and pick enough for myself plus whoever uh, I'm staying with so yeah. that then they can have a bag of Labrador tea as well. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. And it is a good one. It does grow like we get it here in bogs out in Richmond by uh, Blundell road. There are people that have yards that have uh, Labrador tea growing in them. You can find it to see what it looks like by going to the Richmond nature park or going to Burns bog. Okay. Um, those are places you can go to find out about it. And I think also Quiditas on Commercial Drive might sell Labrador tea. Cool. Yeah. Cool. We'll have the, the link to, uh, to Cease's website that you mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah. We'll have that and um, you can you can cruise that along with the email, of course. Um, so if there are any further questions uh, regarding that, yeah, um, that would be great. Uh, I actually just had a question. Uh, great. I can kind of jump in here. Um, it was kind of related to a question we had earlier about insomnia, but it was insomnia slash anxiety. And I was wondering mm -hmm. um, if there were teas specific to people that had, that suffered with, you know, stress or anxiety. You see that a lot, especially mm -hmm. around here. Um, living in the city is very stressful for lots of us. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I was just wondering if there was anything you would recommend just generally for managing that day-to-day -day stress, anxiety, maybe a little bit of depression, you know, those sorts of kind of feeling blue. Yeah, so there's a couple of ones that are good, and one of them is uh, red clover or purple clover. Mm -hmm. um, it actually is very calming and helpful with anxiety and even ADHD. Um, St. John's wort is a very good one for depression. It's like a natural antidepressant, and you, again, you could get it in a tincture, but you, if you made it as a tea, you would just use a very small amount, like half a teaspoon to a cup and mm. just use that as required. So you might, I mean, you could use it every day, but you could also just use it on and off when right. you're going through stuff. But with anything with herbs, I often, other than things like rose hips and hawthorn berries, which can be used every day without a problem, uh, raspberry leaf as well and stinging nettle, there are ones like that that you could just use every day and yeah. it's fine. And then there are ones that are like, because they're cleansers. Um, so things like burdock and dandelion root can't be taken every single day. Right. Uh, but the ones, the ones that I think are the best for anxiety and depression are um, the red clover, stinging nettle, uh, rose hips and hawthorn berries because they deal with the physical onset of of the anxiety and how your mm -hmm. heart rate goes up and your chest kind of feels tight and your body starts to tighten up so those are all herbs that like the one the basically the blend we made could really yeah be very calming cool and all you'd have to add is a bit of uh red clover to that mix to to okay. add in with the depression and um another one for depression is lemon balm Mm. So to, it's like a lemon mint. So some people don't even know it's actually a lemon balm. That they think it's a lemon mint. Right. And it looks just like mint, but it's lemony. So mm. either whatever people want to call it, lemon balm is actually really great for depression. And it um, even just smelling it, it just lifts you up. I find that with Labrador tea as well, that it really lifts me up. So those are cool. some of the good ones for that. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. If we have any other, no, no yeah, we'll questions. Give a second. It'll populate if it needs to. I actually had another question. I was oh, wondering, great. Um, how did you learn all this? Where did you start learning? What was that experience like for you? Oh, 
That's it's good because I haven't been asked that for a very long time. Okay. <laughs> right on, let's revisit it. <laughs> yeah, so in my late teens, I was noticing different health issues I'd had and then when I'd go see a doctor, I would end up being given uh immediately antibiotics and then after I know that you can only use antibiotics so to a, yeah, to a yeah. certain degree before they're no good. So then I would see that it didn't work but that it would also cause other problems. So I was like, what is the point? And then mm. I just decided to stop doing any antibiotics for years, right? Which really annoyed the doctors, but I just told doctors I was allergic to it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like that kid that made up the lie that that stuck for a while. Um, but it was for my own good. It was to think about how can I take care of health issues and uh, not deal with these side effects, right? Mm. And so I, just became super fascinated after realizing that I'd spent my whole life drinking herbal teas for everything that my anything I needed my my dad would just give me a tea and right. interestingly enough it was my dad who's Swiss but he was so into herbal teas and we would go actually visit some woman that uh, lived in Burnaby and had a little tea company. And so yeah. it's sort of funny that I do that now because <laughs> <right? laughs> um, it really came from me seeing how uh, my dad was so passionate. Oh, we need to get this, this and this. We'd always have herbal teas. So then I just decided to start using them for specific things. So I had a bladder infection that knocked me off my feet one day. I was literally walking to a bus stop and I, and the bladder infection was so intense, it actually had also created an ear infection. Mm. And my balance got thrown off. And I literally passed out on the street on my way to a bus stop. And when I woke up, I just could see nobody cared around me and that I was just laying on the street. And I'm like, geez, you know, like, yeah. it's terrible. But I lived in the east side. And it's also I realized a lot of poverty there and a lot of people just putting uh, assumptions, oh, everybody's on drugs. And I was like, I, I wasn't on any drugs. And in fact, I wasn't even on any herbs. So uh, so I had to, I went to my doctor and asked her, you know, what was going on. She told me what was going on. And I said, okay, I'm going to go find some herbs to heal myself. She's like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, no, but I will figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, well, I'm writing you a prescription. And if you can't figure it out in the next few days, you need to take this prescription. I'm like, okay. And I went, I actually went to an herb store. I think it was Sweet Cherubim at the time. And I went through their bulk herbs and I researched what I could see. And then I read a couple of books in their store. And then I found one that had a remedy for ear infection and one for bladder infection. So I went and bought those herbs and then I went home and started taking them and immediately noticed how quickly they started working as compared to the antibiotics right. and that I was actually feeling healing energy through me, not like, ugh, I'm taking medicine, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm enjoying how I had to do a ritual. I had to, you know, boil the tea. I had to steep it. I had to wait for it and then take it. And so all of that actually all those actions calmed me down and focused me and helped me uh, realize that, that even making a cup of tea is ceremony. Yeah, and, sure. you know, so in my teenage life where I didn't really have ceremony because I was growing up in an era where we didn't even have indigenous people come to our schools to, to teach yeah. and where uh, people didn't talk about herbs for healing and, and when I finally got, after I got some training from some elders, I started meeting elders who were teaching me how to make remedies and salves and tinctures. And, and then I started going out and selling them at, you know, native craft fairs. But I would have people come up and make fun of me. They'd see things in Ziploc bags and make fun of me. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I don't know why that you all think it's funny, but you know, it's medicines are sacred. And so just really at the time, nobody did what I was doing, which I, right. you know, was good on one hand because I could go out there and be selling teas and tinctures, but I didn't have any competition, but it was also really hard to help people understand how powerful and yeah. wonderful it is not only to use these, but to make, to get into that, 
uh, relationship of blending. So like even what we just did today and blending the herbs and mm -hmm. talking about, you know, our good feelings we put in there and, you know, I'll make jokes with friends. So I was at doing a talk about teas and I said, if anybody's seen the ramen girl, <laughs> they would understand this. <laughs> and a few people had, so they were laughing saying, yeah, you don't want to cry when you're making your tea because yeah. you'll make people cry when they're drinking their tea or yeah. if you're angry, they'll be drinking their tea, being mad. And so we were, you know, making jokes about how you always have to, you know, but it's serious. We really always have to put our best love into what mm -hmm. we're doing. Like when I'm blending tea, I sometimes don't know who I'm blending the tea for. I'll just think of a blend and think, oh, that sounds great. But who's that really for? Well, I don't know, but somebody's going to come along and need that. Yeah. And I don't want them to feel ill or I don't want them to feel confused because they don't know where, um, where this herb, uh, like what the energy came from. Is yeah. it the herb itself or what? And we have this interesting, I don't know if I can help with that question. Anything for psychosis, hallucinations and delusions. So I, um, there's not much I can say because uh, that one's bigger than me. <laughs> So mm -hmm. when I think of um, that kind of question, I think it's, it is really good to, to be in touch with naturopaths and homeopathic doctors that can give more uh, streamlined herbs. The reason I'm saying that is like people using homeopathic doctors will use herbs, but not the whole herb. Like they won't use a tea. Mm. They will use extracts from different parts of a plant. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, belladonna, which is highly uh, toxic if you just ate the berries, you could get sick and die, possibly, yeah. right? But um, homeopathic uh, chemistry, how it works is it, it finds the one part of that plant and it extracts those... Uh, chemical properties, those right. medical or medicinal properties, and it filters it. That's why people will be like, oh, it's so expensive, but, you know, for a few little pills, but actually you're getting exactly what you need and you're not uh, combining it with other elements of a plant. So even mm -hmm. with um, like black hawthorn berries, for instance, the juice is great. Mm -hmm. The meat is great, but the seeds have cyanide in them. So you have to be careful uh, when you're gathering and drying those yeah. to try to separate the seeds, which is really hard. Yeah. So I tend to not use them, right? Right. Um, or you want to use them and dry them so that you don't, if you do use them, you have to know that there's that, that element that there's traces of cyanide that may be in there. Yeah. So using a homeopathic medicine that helps with calming and focusing can really help more. Uh, it would give more support to somebody dealing with hallucinations or psychosis than somebody who doesn't have all of those concerns they have to deal with when mm -hmm. taking herbs. Right. Right. So I think it's really important to, when you're dealing with, with issues like that to really have a, a really great healthcare team. Absolutely. So not just one, but a bunch. Yeah. We would strongly advocate at the learning circle that um, for any of those sorts of things, you always approach your healthcare, approach your health and wellness in the, with a holistic perspective. Uh, make sure that you have a doctor on your side, a homeopathic um, doctor, if that's, you know, with yeah. whatever it is that you need, but mm -hmm. make sure that you have medical professionals um, yeah. on your side that are supporting that journey, regardless of what it is. Um, uh, we, we, we feel strongly that that's, that's the best approach. We wish, we wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Um, okay. So there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of other, whole other a lot questions. of questions. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that we wanted to touch on today? Um, I don't know. I, I think that, um, I think we've kind of gone through everything. Cool. What we blended a couple of teas. We did. Yeah. We can talk about that. Tap that up again, just in case anybody wants to write the recipe down. Mm -hmm. So the one we just did was one that is helpful for migraines and uh, for early stages of viral 
issues, and that is, uh, so we can call that migraine and viral tea, antiviral tea, and it has uh, a cup of feverfew herb, a half a cup of rose hips, and a quarter cup of, of the black elderberries, and then we just gently mix those together and made a very pretty tea, actually, that has berries <laughs> and leaves yeah. and so that one you would use on a, as an ongoing by use basis. Um, and then the other blend that we did has stinging nettle, raspberry leaf, rose hips, hawthorn berries, hawthorn leaves and flowers. And I think that's it, right? Mm -hmm. And hibiscus. Hibiscus, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so that one's like... A tea, just a nice tasting herbal blend that you could use uh, Lots of vitamins and as a multivitamin vitamin mineral tea to just have. Like I always say to people, there's only two vitamin drinks. <laughs> one is, uh, you know, one is straight up water mm. and or energy drinks, and one is straight up water, and the other is herbal tea, which you can drink hot or cold. Mm. So the great thing about all these herbs is that you can make your tea. Then you can ice it, especially if you're active, or at this time of year, just drink it hot because it's yeah. so cold outside. But totally, you know, follow the seasons and and just think about uh, think about love and decolonizing your heart through the love potions you can each create. Think of the plants that call to you, and uh, I don't know how we'd get samples to anybody. <laughs> It's an interesting question, but I don't know how I would get mm -hmm. this to you because <laughs> yeah. you're all over the place. Yeah. Um, and what about for focus concentration, students working presentations? Okay, so eat more blueberries mm -hmm. for people that need to focus and need concentration. Okay. Believe it or not, it's super brain food. Um, wild berries of all kinds, but blueberries are really high in memory concentration so that's an easy one and it's actually great for people with kidney issues and uh for people that are dealing with other health issues diabetes and such so mm. so it's a really safe one and uh the fact is that it's actually the latin name is vaccinium so that says a lot that mm. it prevents illness and it uh promotes wellness so <laughs> Cool. Um, but for rheumatoid arthritis, I would say raspberry leaf is your best bet for the pain in your body okay. because it's a, it's also a gentle tea and it strengthens your muscles, but it helps with the pain that you feel in your whole body. It's actually partly why all these elders love the heal me tincture because it has raspberry leaf in it. Yeah. They're cool. like, it's good for everything. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't send samples out. I don't know how I would do that, but yeah, I hope that those questions really help. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I would suggest that if you're interested in, um, in trying some of Lisa's teas or, or perhaps, you know, connecting with her in some way, you, uh, we can provide the email. I know that you, you go all over the place and sell the teas. You can, you can access these sorts of, uh, tinctures and all that sort of stuff on her website. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in trying those, that would be the avenue that I would suggest. Um, yeah. As long as there is there anything else, anything else we missed? No, I don't think so. And um, yeah, just definitely keep an eye on our Facebook or social media. We're on all kinds of social media. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter cool. stays uh, focused on keeping us ahead, and you know we have our our website, and we what are we doing next? We'll be at the Métis Fair for the um, Talking Stick Festival. Cool. I think March second. And so that's, I think, at the Roundhouse Community Center. And uh, not sure where our next thing, there's uh, the Brilliance Festival is happening in, on March 9th. I have, I'm trying to remember, but you can type in Brilliance Festival. Mm -hmm. And I won't be there, but uh, one of our friends that we're starting to train more people in our community because yep. it's like, oh, this is a busy day. My daughter and I both got booked somewhere else. We're also doing plant walks regularly at uh, Wild Bird Trust on Dollarton Highway, which is Maplewood Flats. And so Wild Bird Trust uh, is running a lot of plant walks that we're doing out outdoors. And they have quite a variety of indigenous plants on the site because Great. 
they've been beefing it up. I actually did one event where I helped a, a group that was doing team building as their, their uh, pro D day for their business. And yeah. they went and planted a whole bunch of pollinator plants at Maplewood Flats. So, cool. so I helped them do that in October and, um, yeah, and so I'm just kind of all over the map. I yeah. go different places, and I uh, we try to go to craft fairs whenever they are happening, just more than anything because people like to talk to us and, and see who is the person behind the company and, uh, and then also to stock up. And then we also sell things at uh, Mintage on Mintage Clothing Store and Commercial Drive, which okay. are my friends. So you can cool. also stop in at... Uh, mintage get some nice clothes get some nice tea <laughs> or ask questions leave a message for me there and sure. it'll somehow get to me <laughs> sure. right. yeah okay. yeah so check in on your social media and the website and stuff try and keep mm -hmm. informed of what's going on um all right, again we apologize that we started late today we hope you're all staying nice and safe and warm from the snow and the cold and uh yeah we'll see you next time yes. thank you have a warm day <laughs> make some tea <laughs> Bye bye